Section 6.6, .6, division of a polynomial. We're going to divide a polynomial by a polynomial. And when the divisor has more than one term, we use a procedure very similar to long division in arithmetic. And to just dust off your long division skills, most of us, once we're past learning long division, grab a calculator and we haven't done long division for a while. So I want to demonstrate just the procedure because it's what we'll be doing with our division by polynomials. So 257 divided by 4, I'll set it up for our long division. We take our divisor, see how many times it goes into the number here. 4 doesn't go into 2, so I take the next place value. 4 does go into 25 six times. We multiply 4 times 6 is 24. We then subtract. And remember, subtraction is addition of a negative number. So if we didn't want to subtract, we could add a negative number. Just keep that in mind. It may come in handy in very soon with our polynomial division. But moving along, 25 minus 24 leaves 1. Bring down the next value. What times 4 gives us 17? Well, as near as we can get is a 4. 4 times 4 is 16. We subtract 17 minus 16 leaves 1. We could do a decimal and so on, or we could say we have a remainder of 1 fourth. So 64 times 4 plus our remainder of 1 fourth would give us our answer of 257. So using that little refresher, here's our first polynomial divided by a polynomial. I'm going to set it up similar to the long division of the integers that we just had. Here's our divisor. You do want to have your terms here in decreasing powers, and it was set up originally so that that is the case. And similar to working with numbers, we'll start with our leading term of our divisor. x times what gives us this first value here? Well, we'll need an x. x times x is x squared. We need a distributive x times 9, since we have a second term here, is 9x. And we'll place that underneath this similar term. Now in the division that we just saw, we subtract. But we're not only subtracting x squared, we're also subtracting 9x. And oftentimes, if there's an error, this is where it occurs that we see the subtraction here, but we end up ignoring it. So my suggestion is, yes, it's a subtraction of this entire quantity. Use your rule of subtraction by changing the signs to the opposite and then adding. x squared plus a negative x squared cancels out, and 18x plus a negative 9x is 9x. If you can remember subtraction of everything here, great. Otherwise, this is kind of the no-fail recommendation to avoid uh, something happening to a sign somewhere along the line. Then just with normal long division, you bring down your next quantity. We go back, ask ourselves what times x gives you a 9x? Well, we have the x, but we need a positive 9. So we will multiply by 9. 9, this new quantity, times our quotient here or our divisor, 9 times x is 9x. Distributively, we also have to take 9 times 9. Think of this like a two-digit number. 9 times 9 is 81. We're now ready to subtract, and instead of subtract, I'm going to use the rule for subtraction, which says change the signs and add. 9x plus a negative 9x cancels out, and 18 plus a neg or 81 plus a negative 81 cancels out. In other words, x plus 9 went in evenly with no remainder, and our quotient and answer to this problem is x plus 9. Let's take a look at a, another polynomial divided by a polynomial. 
Similarly, I'm going to set it up for the long division. The powers are in decreasing for the variable. If you should have a missing power, we would want to put a placeholder there, but we aren't. We have x to the second, x to the first, and then our constant term. And no different than the last problem, just because there's a 2 here has no bearing on it. We take our highest power in our divisor and ask the question, what do we need to multiply 2x by to give us 4x squared? Well, we would need a 2 to bring it up to a 4, and we need another x to bring this up to an x squared. And now we'll use essentially distributive property. 2x times 2x is 4x squared. 2x times the 3 gives us a 6x. In the long division, we're ready to subtract. Again, you might remember 4x squared minus 4x squared is canceled out, but you might just drop down here and treat this as a plus 6, when in reality it's subtract this 6x along with the minus 22x. So my, again, suggestion is instead of subtracting, change the signs to the opposite of what they are, and then add, which is applying the rule of subtraction. 4x squared plus negative 4x squared is gone. Negative 22x plus a negative 6 is actually a negative 28x. We're now ready to bring down the next quantity and go back for our next value. What times 2x gives us a negative 28x? Clearly we need a negative, 2 times something negative to get us a negative 28. And how many times does 2 go into 28? We'll need a 14. Multiplying negative 14 times 2x gives us the negative 28x. That's good news. And now we will multiply the negative 14 times the 3. A negative times a positive is a negative. 3 times 14, well, 3 times 4 is 12. Carry the 1. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 1 more is 4. We are subtracting. Subtracting using the rule of subtraction is change the signs and add. The 28x's do cancel out because of one being positive, one being negative. That was the whole idea. You always want your leading term to cancel out. But we are adding a 32 plus a 42, which gives us a 74. So we have a remainder. And way back when, in elementary, you may have written your remainder as R74. In the algebra world, for our quotient, or our answer to our division problem, we are going to write it as 2x minus 14 that we found, plus the remainder as the fraction or rational expression of 74 over 2x plus 3. To check a division problem, you multiply, and the check here would be to take our divisor, 2x plus 3, multiply it by our quotient, 2x minus 14, multiply those two binomials, and then add your remainder and see that it does end up giving you this as your solution. Then you'd have verification that you have properly divided the polynomials.